Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to see if I if I can find it quickly. Um, I, 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 <laughs> if if you haven't heard that song before, uh, I want you to listen to it after the class, because um, I want you to know what you sounded like. It sounded pretty cool, um, but. Uh, <laughs> It, it's it's definitely not like you were supposed to sound. Um, mm. And let me quickly see if I can find it. Ah. <laughs> All right, I found a link. There we go. So uh, you will hear at one point when the, when she sings, it it sounds a little bit like a bad internet connection. Um, mm. So uh, anyway, yeah. So Heidi, um, now that I can actually hear you properly, um, you started saying in the previous class that the uh, though the weather is very nice autumn weather. Yes, yes, it's very nice. Is it? Oh, mm -hmm. that's lovely. Yeah, I, d I don't know if. Sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit, but I don't know if you saw my comment yesterday on that link that you posted. Ah yes. You you posted that Actually, link about the Actually, tsunami Daniel. and the cherry blossom. Yes, it's tsunami and cherry blossom. It was a movie in uh, uh, some mm -hmm. England. Woman uh, shot the movie. Yeah. Then uh, it was almost um, awarded in the Hollywood um, Oscar, mm -hmm. but wow. other movie got more. <laughs> so. <laughs> it looks like a like a beautiful movie. Yes, um, yes. You know, and it's from what I understand, it almost looks like it's it talks about how we as human beings turn mm. tragedy into something better and and, and find beauty mm. even when things go wrong in our lives. I didn't watch that full movie, but my friend watched it and he cried. Yeah. I can imagine uh, looking at that at the footage. I think I'm going to cry as well, but <laughs> I will watch it. <laughs> it's such a short movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just with that teaser, the trailer, I I could yeah. see that it's the kind of movie that I will cry when I watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so Heidi, we're talking about. I'm um, actually. I think we've got an interesting class today, in the sense that mm. we've got an, a travel yeah. class. This We're is talking a about four hundred category, a very difficult one. Pretty difficult, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. so the the it's a travel class, but yeah. I, I found an interesting travel article mm. about music. Um, so it's it's a combination of music and travel today. And mm -hmm. I, I guess that was to be expected because I mean you know I'm absolutely crazy about music, so um, we'll be we'll be looking at that, um, and I'm going to give you the link before we get started. Otherwise, I might forget. Um, okay, so there's the link to the article, but before we get to the article, let's let's have a look at some of our grammar. Um, and like you said, it's 400 level, so I know it's it's entry level for you. I know you're very good with the grammar. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we're talking about third conditional. Yeah. So what can you tell me about the third conditional? It's kind of a regret. Um, it already uh, happened in the past, but the person wants to change the past uh, which happened. Or if or oh, that time, uh, uh, if we, I chose another way, how it was? Imagine that. All right. Yeah. So it's kind of what if. Yeah. All right. Yes. Absolutely. Spot on. All right. So let's take it from the top. Um, you can use the third conditional to express regret. Exactly what mm -hmm. you said. Re regret about something that happened in the past. Um, mm. And it is also used to hypothetically explore other possible scenarios or yeah. past situations. Mm -hmm. right. So, for example, if I'd known it was your birthday, 
I would have bought you flowers or if they had studied more they would have passed the test um, if she hadn't lost her job she wouldn't have stolen the money hmm. alright so it is impossible to go back and change the past obviously um, but the third conditional gives us a way to imagine this you know to imagine going back um, climbing our little back to the future car and explore what could have happened if <coughs> alright so the way we construct a sentence is if plus the subject plus had plus the past participle plus the subject plus would have plus the past participle and it sounds incredibly complicated but I mean the exa an example sentence we have here is if you had asked me about the plan I would have told you about it mm -hmm. alright so it's, it sounds difficult when you look at the formula but it's very easy um, can you give me an example sentence of okay. the third conditional? If I had been born in America I would be a calling a teacher not student now alright <laughs> very good <laughs> yes alright that's very good um, alright and then they say you can also switch the first and second clause of the third conditional sentence alright in this case you don't need a comma between the clauses alright so for example um, let's take the one about passing the test um, and I'm going to put it in our text box alright so this is the third conditional sentence if they had studied more they would have passed the test alright but now we're talking about um, switching around the first and second clause so what we do is we say if uh, no no we, we say they would have passed the test all right so let's type that in there um, they would have passed the test if they had studied more all right so the comma falls away and the first and the second uh, parts of the sentence swap out or change places all right so uh, I'm, I mean that's fairly straightforward is that clear to you Heidi okay I would be a very good politician if my father had been uh, John F. Kennedy oh that's a very good sentence um, <laughs> all right so now in that one uh, swap the first and second clause and give us that sentence again mm-hmm what? Alright, remember we, we looked at this example, we said if they had studied more they mm. would have passed the test. Ah, then yes, we yes. swap the first and the second cl uh, clauses and we say they would have passed the test if they had studied more. Yes, yes. So now with your sentence swap out the first and the second clause. Yes, second clause. So change the first one. Uh, if John F. Kennedy had been my father I would be very good politician now all right yeah all right there we go great excellent <laughs> that's really all I can say um, all right and then the last point is that you can create a third conditional sentence by making questions about the past all right so we can do questions with what if um, so what if you had been born a hundred years ago um, that's always an interesting one to me actually and seeing as we've got quite a bit of time on our hands um, Heidi what if you had been born a hundred years ago years ago. please explore that um, <laughs> and now this this is not asking you to make a sentence or anything mm -hmm. just explore that what would would it have been like if you were born a hundred years ago I would have worn the wrong dress if I were <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. I had been born uh, 100 years ago okay yeah and what else what other how would your life have been different mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That time, Japan was just changed the government to emperor. Yeah. So then female didn't have any right to vote and anything, no job. So I would be, um, I would have been inside of a house doing only house chores, yeah. taking care of all the parents, parents in law and kids. If I were, I had been born in 100 years ago. All right. Yeah, that's definitely, I think, a, a bit of a negative. Or, or do you? Th- what do you think? Do you think it's negative or positive? Negative. Negative. All right. Situations <laughs> are similar, the, like Muslim women. Okay. That time. Yeah. They don't have any right to work and to get educate education. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, yeah, that's. Definitely, I think, a downside. Would there have been anything good or anything nice about having been born 100 years ago? Yeah, to go. I, I would wear, I would have worn a um, very beautiful kimono. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> All right. Well, it's, it's good. It's a, I think it's a great thing if you can always see the upside, always see the positive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now, another thing that I always, you know, I always wonder about, what if we were born a hundred years ago, Mm. but we knew what our lives would be like if we had been born today? Does that make sense? You know, so almost like time travel. Uh, You're going back in time, and now you have to live a hundred years ago. But mm-hmm. you remember all the technology and the education and the freedom that you had. What do you think life would have, would be like? Mm, so nothing, particularly women, they don't have any right to be educated. And then Japan was a kind of men-dominated um, society. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, it's it's actually you know I think it's it's interesting to hear different people's perspectives, um, because I I think about what if I could go back a hundred years, and I think wow that would be cool, but um, well as a man obviously we didn't have any problems ever men men dominated or tried to dominate everything throughout history. Um, and then finally, we woke up and realized that uh, we couldn't do it without women. Um, but you know, so I think it's it's very romantic idea for a man to go back and in, in, into the past. But yeah, I think it's different for women. And yes, yes. Probably also it depends on the cultures. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, let's have a look at our article, Heidi. Um, okay. All right, so let's let's read our article. I'm going to put it on screen share. All right, so it's sampling New York's musical buffet. Hmm. All right, I think it sounds interesting. Would you like to read, Heidi? Okay. Okay. After New York, New Orleans. Oh, or or <laughs> I can't pronounce Orleans. Or Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans. New Orleans. Okay. Mm. After New Orleans childhood in which he was warned on, on jazz, the a pianist Jonathan Batiste, now 26, moved to New York City and encountered its election, eclectic. eclectic music scene, which clubs featuring rock, hip hop, even blue, blue glasses and jazz act sometimes all in the same night. In New Orleans, there's a spirit in the air everywhere you go, and that spirit is a unifying factor that makes New Orleans so beautiful and unique. Mr. Batiste uh, said, 
but it also makes it insurer, insurer, and and uh, and specific to just that region. New York, on the on the other hand, is a uh, choose your own adventure sort of scene. You don't have a, a co cohesive cohesive fair team, and mm -hmm. everything is a part of it. He said. Whatever it is you want to go into, at any given time, you can find in it, it in New York. And that the diversity, Mr. Baptist said, is uh, reflected in uh, his new album, which is Stay, Stay Human Band, social music, which uh, combines elements from his up Rhyme upbringing like like riffs riffs of muddy grass Indian song, which funk hip hop and the new new age. There is something for everybody. He said of the album, uh, just like his adop adopted CD. Below uh, added, 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 ex ex except. Um, edit, mm -hmm. edited except from a com conversation conversation with Mr. Batist on the exploring New York music scene. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think what we do here, I will read the question and then you will read the answer, almost like we're having an interview. Okay. All right. So um, to hear a mix of musical styles, where do you go? The platform of the bad holds stop off the L train. It's the whole idea of New York having uh, that 160 cultures in one place, a global melting pot. I've seen Morgan O'K. They're playing banjo, and the style is really folk and bluegrass. So that a guy named John Johnson playing some soul uh, trombone with a loop a pedal there by, uh, there by himself. That was really awesome. I even saw, even saw lightning bolt, this punk, uh, super intense rock dude, do it. To see that kind of stuff out in the open on a platform is pretty uh, ridiculous. Any musical venues you like? Mm -hmm. I'm the type of person who, unless it's an amazing show with a pyrotech, pyrotechnic and dancing, yes. and even then it's the tough. I prefer music in a similar uh, venues where the acu acoustics are great and it's like you are in uh, some someone the living room that the vibe at the health on the top floor of the Maki Maki Hotel. It's a speak speakeasy, no more than two hundred people, and the back has this feel of you know the old sleeper train people used to go on on stage to the next in back in the day. It's a beautiful place to go to hang out. I know Jim James from my morning jacket played at Mucky, Mucky Trick and the pre preservation hall jazz band was the residence there. Mm -hmm. Rockwood Music Hall that had evening from Established the act to up and coming in, in this start. Greg Clark, Junior uh, Johnson, Linder, Linder. Yeah. Oh, there are three different stages. My uh, prefecture prefect stage preference. two. Preference. Oh, I'm sorry, preference. <laughs> My preference <laughs> is stage two. Uh, they have table around the stage. So you are looking right up at the performer, and everyone behind there. 
of the bar in the balcony, you you'd be really、uh, cramped in the, for shows a night. The cutting room is a big space, and it's as if you are walking into the rock and roll hall, rock and roll hall of fame. The bar is spotted.、Mm-hmm. Shaped. The, the bar is sharp, shaped like the, a guitar, guitar with a, a flat board at the at the end. The stage has this、uh, incre- incredible awning, really legal looking. But then you sit in the audience and it's cozy. The food is、uh, great. Good down home food. <laughs> Good down home food like my、uh, macaroni and <laughs> cheese and ripe leaves. Mmm, sounds delicious. Any spots where you can learn about New York's musical history? The National Jazz Museum in、uh, Harlem. Mr.、Uh, Batis is the artist director at Ranch Ranch. They have a performance and a exhibitions for one. They have the savory, 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 savory collection, a treasure chest of、uh, recordings of all the radio broadcast of artists like Billy Holiday, Duke Ellington, done by the guy William Savory, savory. The one in the one I was really surprised by was the live version of Billy's Holiday's "Serenity Fruit."、Uh, that's such a deep one to hear her sing it live. It's incredible. All right, very good, Heidi. Have you got any questions or comments? Yeah, it's very difficult. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some interesting bo- vocabulary in here.、Mm, yeah. There's a few words that、um, I've picked up that I would like for us to have a look、mm. at. So、uh, yeah, if elect- you can have a look. Th- eclectic.、Yeah. I don't know. Eclectic. Right, eclectic. Let's. Have a look here. Dictionary. dot com. <laughs> eclectic is often used to describe something that's strange.、Mm. Um, but let's see. How do they? But eclectic is is not just strange. It, it's there. We go.、Um, made up of what is selected from different sources. So, a good example、um, is if you take. A place like South Africa, you can go almost anywhere. If you stop in the middle of the street and you look around, you're probably going to see、um, white people, black people, Chinese people,、um, and、um, let me think what else.、Um, Pakistanis,、uh, you know. So people literally from all over the world,、oh. and that is an eclectic mix, an、mm-hmm. eclectic mix of people. All right, but you can have an eclectic mix of music,、um, mm. where you just randomly pick from、mm. different places.、Mm. All right, so it's eclectic. Literally means a a jumbled mix. Mhm. Mhm. Okay. Like Does that make say, sense?、Uh, melting pot. So repeat that question, please, Heidi. Like、uh, this article said, a melting pot. Yes, exactly. Like the article says, a melting pot. Melting、yeah. pot. Yeah. Mhm. How yeah. about the word in insular? Insular. I don't know insular. Right. Let's have a look at that one as well. Make it insular and specific. All right. They say、um, of or pertaining to an island or islands,、mm-hmm. uh, or, or dwelling or situated on an island. All right. So let's read the sentence.、Um, 
he says, New Orleans, there's a spirit in the air everywhere you go. And that spirit is the unifying factor that makes New Orleans so beautiful and unique, Mr. Mm -hmm. Batiste said. But it, but it also makes it insular and specific to just that region. All right, so insular, the best way to describe it, you can, you can think of the word insulate. Mm -hmm. Now, if you insulate something, so it means... Isolated. There we go. Insula yes. Insulated is isolated. Yes, it's like it's like isolated. It's protected from the outside world. Yeah. All right. So what are you basically saying is that the the culture in New, New Orleans is very isolated and very protected from the outside world. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look at another word, cohesive. Cohesive. Coherent. Mm. Cohesive. Cohesive and coherent come from the same word, yes. Mm. It, do you know what that means, Heidi? Cohesive. Co coherent. Coherent is a... Mm, like, uh, um, um, many uh, people gathered in the same place? Yeah, not necessarily. You get the right idea by, by bringing cohesive and coherent together. Um, it's, you could say it's bringing a lot of people in, together in the same place, but also it's, when something is cohesive, it means it sticks together. Now stick together. Yeah, it, or it bonds. Mm -hmm. right, so they say he says you don't have a cohesive theme, and everything is part of it. So in other words, there is no one solid theme. It's it's a whole bunch of different themes. Mm -hmm. All right. What does it mean? Riff, R I F F. Riff. Is mm, I'm trying to think. How can I, how can I explain that? <laughs> I do the um, the only way I can think of explaining that to you is by actually letting you hear what a riff is. Um, a riff is. I'm gonna do this. If you will give me a second, I'm gonna turn screen share off. And I'm going to show you with my guitar. A riff is, for instance, when I do this. All right, so it's when you play something um, on, on a guitar, for instance, or on a mandolin or a ukulele, um, a stringed instrument. Uh, so a combination, usually it's a combination of chords that om gives you almost like a melody. That's a riff. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Riff. Is that, <laughs> does that make sense, Heidi? A little difficult. Is, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to get the idea. Um, what I would suggest maybe is if if you go onto YouTube after the class and mm -hmm. put in the word riff, let me actually quickly do this for us. Um, I'm, I'm going to go and Google. I'm going to put in the word riff. And... Uh, all right, there we go. They say a riff is a short and usually repeated pattern of notes in a song. Mm, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you remember that song, Smoke on the Water? Have you ever heard that ah, song? Yes, yes, yes. Now, at yeah. the beginning, Smoke they play... The da, 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 yeah. da, 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 Fire in the sky. Smoke in the water. Da, 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 yeah, da, da, da. That's it. <laughs> now, at the beginning of that song, they play... Dum, 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 da, dum. That is a riff. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Yeah, I think that's one of the I most remember. famous riffs. <laughs> so, that's
that that is exactly what a riff is. It's it's when you play a few notes and you repeat it all the time. You keep repeating it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to put us back on screen share so we can have a look at our article. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions, Heidi? Oh, I just wanted to have a look at also at the word Mardi Gras. The way we pronounce mm. this is Mardi Gras. They, Mardi you write Gras. it Mardi Gras, but it's Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. Mardi yeah. Gras, Indian. Indian yeah. song. Now, Mardi Gras is the the festival that they have every year uh, in New Orleans. I'm going mm. to quickly put some pictures on on the screen uh, of the Mardi Gras, and when you see this, you're going to say, "Oh, you've seen this before if you've seen it on TV oh. or wherever." Mm. This is the Mardi Gras. It's the biggest mm. festival. In well, in New Orleans, obviously, but mm. um, I think it's probably one of the big biggest ah. festivals in America. Is it uh, New Orleans? Yeah. Oh, really? I have friend. Who came you here. have a, a friend that that went there. New Orleans, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, he was living in Japan for a while. Then sometimes I talk to him. He says yeah. there is very famous festival. Spring season. Yes, it's the Mardi Gras festival. Yeah, I didn't know that. Many tourists come to that place. Yes. And he said, her mother and her grandmother cooked, cooked a very delicious food, a lot of food, mm. cakes, or a lot of food on the table. All right. So he, he ate too much, <laughs> always. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about like the Mardi Gras. Um, it's, it actually looks like quite an amazing festival. I would love mm -hmm. to still go there one day. Uh, he came from Louisiana. Yeah. All Louisiana. right. From Louisiana. All right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, I promise you one day when I'm all grown up, I'm going to go to the Mardi Gras. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but that will be then. <laughs> and he said, uh, on the funeral, uh, many uh, kind of band follow that uh, coffin, behind yeah. the coffin. They're playing some jazz or something, uh, dancing. Oh, yeah. very... <laughs> It's a very cheerful um, funeral. <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> maybe I think maybe that's the ideal funeral. I don't know what you think, Heidi, but mm. maybe I think one day when I'm old and I pass away, um, mm. I want people to celebrate my life. I don't want them to cry for me. So I'm also <laughs> going to, to organize a band for my funeral. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Adi, there was another word. I'm, ah, there we go. I've been looking for it. Pyrotechnics. Do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. No. Pyrotechnics. All right. They say, yeah, they say you're, um, I'm the type of person who, unless it's an amazing show with pyrotechnics and dancing, and then I'm not going to read the rest of it, but pyrotechnics, let's, again, I love pictures. Um, I'm going to put the word pyrotechnics in here and see what pictures we find. The mm -hmm. But usually on a stage, uh, a good example is, um, is this. This looks like... Um, What's that German band's name? I forget. It's a German heavy metal band. Um, they they got became famous, I think, with the song "Du Hast," but mm. uh, they use it a lot when there's fire and um, fireworks and flames and and things on stage. Mm. This is what we call pyrotechnics. Oh, really? Fire! I can't fire believe I forgot like these guys' names. Fireworks. Yes, like. 
like fireworks and like the, in this picture, uh, mm. Rammstein, that's their name. Yes, oh. Rammstein. Um, where they use, these guys literally use fire in their shows, mm. but uh, but pyrotechnics is also about fireworks, not just not just fire itself, but all these kind of special effects that they use at a rock show. And not mm. just in a rock show, but um, in movies. Um, when it's when it involves fire and explosions, um, we call it pyrotechnics. Here's another good example of pyrotechnics. Mm. So it's a form of a special effect, if I can call mm. it that. Very beautiful. Right. It is. It is. And some bands make use of it uh, in an amazing way. I think this is also a, a beautiful example of pyrotechnics. We have uh, fireworks coming out of the roof. Yeah, so anyway, yeah. that's pyrotechnics. Pyrotechnics. Heidi, have you got, yeah. have you got any other questions or comments? Mm. <laughs> Say again, Heidi? I forgot the article. <laughs> you, you did what? I already forgot the article. <laughs> oh, you already forgot the article. <laughs> oh, fretboard. How about fretboard? All right, fretboard. <laughs> that's, um, that's on a guitar. Guitar. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's something that you find on a guitar. So what mm. I'm going to do, I'm going to take screen share off again, and I'm going to show you on my guitar. Um, mm. This this part here is the fretboard. Mm -hmm. All right, and these little metal struts, we call them yeah. frets. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so this is this is the fretboard, the part that you play on. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm. All right. Does that answer your question, Heidi? Yes. Okay, I got it. All right. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Sure. You're welcome. Yeah. So, any other questions or comments? Mm. Well, it's very good. New York has a lot of um, um kind of theater or cinema. And I heard uh, yeah. even um, common people can participate in some competition. Yeah. From that place, some, many rare cases, someone became very major. Wow, so you're telling me if I want to become famous, that's where I need to go. Yeah, I I'm thought that. I'm packing yeah. my guitar now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Even Japanese, some Japanese musicians participated in that. Yeah. All right. Wow, that sounds very, very promising. So it's, is it is it like a competition, almost like um, what is it? Britain's Got Talent or one of those? Yeah, a professional and no, a mature mixed. That kind yeah. of competition, the stage. And the audience, uh, uh, the club, the hand. Yeah. Mm. Maybe All bigger right. or better. Yeah. Hmm. That sounds that sounds like a place that's definitely worth going to. Mm. Yeah. So, I did, I, w I was thinking, you know, when I read this article, um, I was thinking when. Well, you you're a person that likes to travel. When you travel, do you go to places like music clubs or places where you can listen to the local music? Yeah, once or twice, but not outside in Japan. I visited that club, mm. yeah. music club. Mm -hmm. Not professional, but not uh, per per perfect amateur. They are All playing right. that stage. Yeah. Mm. All right. But so my question is really, when you travel, when you yeah. go overseas, I've never been you... uh, 
the, some kind of music club in the outside. Okay, never. Mm, All right. Never. But do you enjoy going to music clubs when you're in Japan? Yes, yes. All right. What is it about music clubs that that you like that draws you? At that time, the music was uh, different from now, like uh, benches. <laughs> yeah. Be beach boys like that. Okay. Um, sex p pistols. Yeah. Like the, so, the, the, their copy in Japan. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to use this word and ask you is is it about the nostalgia? Are you familiar with the word nostalgia? Mm, uh, nostalgia, yeah. All right. So do you do you like music clubs um and and going to places like like this where you can listen to people doing old I almost want to say old music, old school music. Um, and uh, do you go there for the nostalgia? Yeah, to to right. almost remember the past and and mm. yeah, it's almost but like the, like a time machine and going back. Yeah, but in Japan, uh, such music clubs are considered as a very bad bad place. So there are many bad guys. Okay. We thought so. So. I'm a little uh, scared. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And but but did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy the music? Yes, yes, I enjoyed it very much. All right, cool. Do you participate yeah. in such kind of music club sometimes? I sometimes do. Yes. Mm. Yes. Um, it's happened a few times that I I would play at a music club. Where I, you know, you're not the headlining artist, but they have a whole bunch of different people, and everybody gets 20 or 30 minutes on the stage, um, and it's really good fun playing at at shows like that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah. So, Heidi, um, what was your most memorable trip that you've ever had? Um, Remember a you know, when, trip? Yeah, yeah, trip. When you yeah. were traveling. Mm, maybe New York. Travels. New York is the one of the memorable trips. Yeah. In New York, I enjoyed it very much. All right. What What was it that made it special? I, I went to New York just after terror attack. Nine eleven. <laughs> Two weeks yeah. later. So. Wow. The, Underground of the uh, trade center was mm -hmm. still burning, so all New York City was kind of bad smell, and the kind of wow. smoky came from the yeah. underground. Always something burning. Whoa! <laughs> okay. Like New York was morning like that, so I was yeah. a little sad. Mm hmm. Mm. Um, tourist All number right. was very small, and uh, yeah. on the street, mm, yeah, people are walking. But maybe compared to usual New York, it's much fewer than uh, the people are fewer than uh, usual. But I enjoy okay. shopping, you know, eating something on restaurant or street food, and uh, we went to the yeah. broad Broadway. To oh, see the musical. Mm -hmm. Which musical did you go see, Heidi? Lion King. <laughs> ah, okay. I thought it was that one because I remember you said you saw the Lion King on Broadway. <laughs> yes, yes. My sister asked me, what, what, "Which is better for you?" I, I said, "I couldn't speak English completely, so Lion King was better because if, even though I don't, I can't understand what thing, but." Somehow we can follow the st uh, story. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think it's a clever move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what was the food like in New York? Uh, I I ate uh, the hot dog on the street. Um, yeah. 
It said a very famous hot dog um, vendor. Yeah. And a kind of bakery. <laughs> okay. Yeah, very delicious. And another is we often went to Chinatown to eat some porridge, Chinese porridge. Yeah. It was very delicious and uh, Chinese dumplings. Ooh, do you enjoy dumplings? Yeah, very delicious. Okay. Mm, old woman had wow. some wagon. Wagon is a yeah. st steaming wagon. wagon. Yeah. Then on the wagon there are many small oh, um, a bamboo box, round shape bamboo box inside of uh, yeah. kind of dumplings. Depend on the uh, bamboo box, the dumpling was different kind. So we can choose. Okay. What is this? We must open the box. Ah, no, no. What is this? <laughs> open the box. <laughs> oh, I choose one <laughs> like that. <laughs> Very enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. What is what are Chinese dumplings like? I've never had Chinese dumplings. Mm, at first, uh, you make dough, yeah, like pizza, very thin, mm -hmm. and inside is a kind of pork and um, onion or cabbage, or depend on uh, different. And they're yeah. tasted by some food, uh, soy sauce or uh, pepper mm. and uh, chili pepper or something. And wrapped mm. and steamed. Okay. Very that delicious. sounds very interesting. Yeah. That sounds delicious. And the inside it's... meat and some soup. So, uh, soup mm, yeah. uh, is a kind of girl by gelatin. Then, after steaming, the gelatin is melted. So, if you bite the uh, dumplings, from inside, some soup uh, came to your mouth. Very delicious. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like something I, I should really try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow. I'm trying to find a picture. I want to show you what um, the typical South African dumplings are like. Oh, really? Uh, we've, got an, we've got an entirely ah. different culture when it comes to dumplings ah, I remember. but I cannot uh, three, yeah? three years ago I went to Tunisia mm -hmm. then we went, uh, I went to the restaurant local restaurant we ate uh, a dumpling that place it's African dumpling yeah. maybe but maybe different from <laughs> your place because it's far <laughs> Yeah, and, and well, in, in South Africa, actually, well, I'm saying in South Africa, let's rather mm. say the way I grew up, I mm. got to know dumplings as a pudding, mm. as as dessert. Mm. We we have a dumpling pudding, um, mm. which is, yeah, and in, in Afrikaans, we call it saus kleikis, mm. which... Yeah, which is dumplings. I'm trying to translate that, but there's the only translation is dumplings. Um, but it's it's quite quite delicious. Um, mm. I'm going to show you a picture. I finally yes, found yes. a picture, um, mm -hmm. and there we go. This is South African dumplings. Mm. So it's it gets this milky mm. sauce. Um, and uh, cinnamon and sugar on top of it. Mm. Oh, so it's different it from is... that uh, uh, the dumpling in uh, Tunisia. Yeah, I'm guessing that Tunisian dumplings will probably be more spicy. Yes. Am I right? Mm. All right. Yeah. Not sweet. Yeah, you, not sweet. Yeah, you seen uh, in the Afrikaans culture, dumplings are sweet. Mm. So I've never had Chinese dumplings or any spicy or savory dumplings um, but it's definitely something that I will try mm, yeah not the because sweet it's yeah not you like you said not sweet at all yeah mm. that's hmm 
Um, no, definitely South African dumplings have to be <laughs> sweet. <laughs> our and, our you know, conversation always end up with uh, food. <laughs> it, it's so funny, isn't it? <laughs> 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 There's, you know, that made me think now, uh, we have a, a local radio DJ <laughs> who is, he's a very nice guy, and one day I met him, he was a, a master of ceremonies at a function where I was, and mm. he was sitting at my table, and I said to him, you know what, whenever I hear you on the radio, mm. you, you are, you're always speaking about food, and it doesn't matter <laughs> what kind of food you speak about, by the time you finish talking about it, my mouth is watering. <laughs> and he looks at me and he, say, he says to me, yes, but if, if we can't live for food, what else can we live for? <laughs> but food conversation so, uh, is very good, right? Um, no one uh, can get harmed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it's not like politics or religion or things like that. Nobody gets hurt. It's just yeah. it's good. <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> yeah. So, wh what is your favorite dessert, Heidi? Now that we are talking about food, what's your favorite dessert? Well, dessert is okay, but recently I like tiramisu, Italian yeah. sweet. Mm. Oh yes, tiramisu is really, really delicious. Mm. But it's, uh, the calorie is very high. <laughs> it is, yes. <laughs> I do agree. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> yeah, but um, I absolutely think that, you know, food is amazing. Mm, um, yeah. And we, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know, but we live in a culture where we don't eat to live anymore. We live to eat. Mm. Um, but, yeah. It's not my fault the food tastes that good. Mm. No. <laughs> if food wasn't meant mm. to be good, then I think life would have been boring. Mm. Boring? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> mm. uh, nothing is boring, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, nothing is boring, but if food wasn't yeah, yeah. good, if, if food doesn't food. taste good, <laughs> life would be boring. <laughs> anyway, well, Heidi, I'm afraid that we are out of time. Yeah, but, thank um, you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I've really enjoyed our class this morning. Thank you for joining. Thank you. See you again. Bye-bye. Right. Take care. Enjoy your day. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.